Welcome to the M Group's media channel, Behind the Curtain. This is the MCAST that discusses the intersection of marketing and technology and how businesses can position their brands for the digital future. I'm Sarah Harrell, here with Janessa Meyer, both from the M Group. And here with us today is Jennifer Kane with Kane Consulting. Jen has been with us before. We want to thank her for coming back. Kane Consulting is a social media and marketing firm in the Twin Cities, where Jen is a principal. She has extensive experience in communication and strategic planning, and most recently she's been speaking to groups about social media and the wonders of Twitter and has even created her own boot camp training those that are new to social media. Today's topic is social media and marketing, specifically how it's critical to brand development. Jen, um, there has been a, a, a very large shift that has taken place in the marketplace in the way that consumers consume. It's no longer just a one-way conversation, as we've discussed before. It indeed is a, is a two-way. Consumers are not necessarily listening anymore. Interruptive marketing has seen its day. So, monologue versus dialogue. Um, so, why is social media a natural outlet for effective mar marketing? Let's talk specifically about the fact that it's authentic, transparent, inclusive, customer-driven, etc. But tell us, why bother with social media as part of your marketing mix? Well, at, at this point, with the pervasiveness of the tool, I would say, like, why bother having a phone line? It, it, is, it is something that is dictated by the market. That is where people are, and if those people are your clients, you should be there. And what we're seeing is, you know, like, Facebook is now the fourth largest country in the world, if it was a country. Um, when you're talking about that, the, a mass of people that huge, there's got to be some people there that are interested in your business or that might have some sort of connection to your business. So I think that, you know, certainly the popularity of the tools are dictating that it's a natural place for people to put their energies. Um, and what I think is really helpful about the tool, and a lot of people don't talk about um, the information that you can get from the tools can be very interesting marketing information. When you kind of go back to the, you know, I've been doing marketing for 10, 15 years, and at the beginning of any marketing process is this kind of fundamental who are we talking to sort of dialogue. And I recently came from, to, uh, from a conference where everybody was talking about kind of creating your marketing persona. Who is this person? Her name is Jill, and she's in her 40s, and she likes to buy paper towels and whatever, and kind of forming this portrait of this person. And I asked the question of, why don't you just go on Twitter? Because she's on Twitter. And just ask her what kind of paper towels she likes to buy. That, that what social media at least has enabled me to do with some of my clients is to eliminate that kind of fantasy period at the front end where you're thinking, who are these magical people? And what kinds of things may they want us to say to them? And you can crowdsource that information. And you can say, people, we would like to offer a new so service for our company. What do you think of it? People, we, you know, we think that we've been hearing a lot of problems with such and such product. Should we eliminate it? And that information at the front end of your marketing is a goldmine opportunity for companies because you're no longer relying on kind of a, a fantasy model of a person. You're relying on real data from people. So what you lack in the, in the hardcore data ROI at the end because you're monitoring conversations, not you know, touch points and widgets and things like that, you're making up for on the hardcore data on the front end, which I think is really valuable. Uh, what is, in your mind, what is the most important part of social media marketing? I think the, the most important thing that you can do is to be consistent with it. Um, and to, if you're, go if you're going to participate in it, to participate in it. I, I, you know, I, if you use the analogy of a phone, it's far worse to set up a voicemail line for your company and then never pick up your messages. And so you have a lot of companies that are setting up these channels for their company and they're not monitoring that conversation. And that's actually worse for your brand than not to have been in the space at all. Because basically you're hanging on a sign that says, here's where we like to talk to people. And then people say, well, for instance, you know, whatever bank, this is a situation I had with the bank. I had a really bad time at the bank. I used their Twitter handle in the, in the post. And I said, I had a very bad experience at the bank. And they're not monitoring it. And so that did the opposite for me. Now, it offended me. It made me want to change banks because it was fake. And I think that the level of inauthenticity can really damage your brand much more so than saying, you know what, Twitter's not our bag. 
you know what, we're, we're gonna have a Facebook fan page, that's it for our company. If you're gonna do a little piece, pick your piece and work it like the Dickens and, consistent, and consistently, rather than saying we're gonna have all of these channels and we're gonna put an intern on it and every you know third Wednesday they're gonna post some stuff, that's not gonna be a really productive strategy for your company. So what I hear you saying is it has to be, it should be strategically based. Yes. Given that, what might be some goals for social marketing? Well, I, I think that your marketing goals for social media are the same as your marketing goals for your entire campaign, right? So it's it's not something that you're doing as an offshoot of other things that you're doing. You're looking at all sorts of different spaces that you would like to play in. And some of those spaces may be print, some of them may be broadcast, some of them may be social media. You want to make sure that there's some synergy between those things, obviously that they're kind of feeding into each other and talking to each other, that they're consistent with brand messages. Um, and you're working kind of all of those different channels in the same sort of way. So that if you are strategic about social media and you approach it with a specific goal in mind, and you are rigorous about the use of it, you will see the same sorts of results using social media that you would using print or broadcast. Awesome. So, uh, okay, let's flip it around. What do you say to those businesses that fear losing control of their brands by opening themselves up to the masses? I think that it's certainly a, a well-founded fear. Nobody wants to know that somebody's saying bad things about your company. But in the case of this bank, I became a bad advocate for their brand. Not only did I say I had a horrible time at this bank, <clears throat> I told thousands of my followers I had a horrible time at this bank. So would it be difficult and challenging for that bank to hear that I had an unhappy day? Yes. What's much worse for their company is to hear that I had an unhappy day, wrote a blog, blog, blog post about it, sent information out to all of my Twitter followers, we set up a user group of people who hate this bank. I mean, that kind of information can kind of spiral out of control, and that's far worse for you than to just nip it in the bud. It's the same thing if you're having an interpersonal relationship to say, it looks like you're unhappy with the work that I produce for you and your client to say, yes, I am, and to deal with it rather than to let that spiral out of control. So is it uncomfortable? Yes, but what's nice about social media is it's fast and you take care of it. You say, I'm sorry, I apologize, and you move on. And that's actually far easier than having to deal with a big public relations nightmare that kind of happens on the back end when you decide to keep control so tightly that you're not listening to anything people say, the good or the bad or the ugly. Can you give us an example of a situation where it was uh, the buzz in social was not so great and it caused the company a problem and they had to get it on it very quickly and turn it around. Can you tell us, can you give us an example of, of a success story there? Um, because you did the success story. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, not so successful <laughs> stories there. I think well, you know one of the big uh, things that people, examples that people use is that Domino's had an unfortunate incident in one of their pizza chains, and some people did some things to a pizza and videotaped it, and that video got released and it kind of blew out of proportion. Um, and what you saw was kind of Domino's getting on top of that and releasing a video with the president talking, and you know they kind of covered their bases and what they needed to do. There were certainly things that they could have done along the way to refine that, um, <clears throat> but it was the kind of the steps were there in that they acknowledged it. They didn't pretend that it didn't happen. They didn't try to shut down, going back to control, shut down all of these channels and say, nobody gets to talk anymore. They used the channels to try to take care of the mess, which is a very effective way to do that. And I think as you see all of these companies entering social media, in the past year and into the coming year. What you're going to see is a year from now, many, many thousands of companies will have their dominoes moment. Something will go wrong and they're gonna to have to deal with it. And so it will, be, it will become about what it, how is your company, does your company have a strategy, strategy for how you're gonna handle a crisis? Do you know who's gonna be the contact person? These are things that you start, you should start to think about as far as managing your online reputation. It's just as important as marketing your brand. Well, let me, okay, so let's, let's say I'm a, uh, I'm a business owner, I set my social strategy, I am out there, I've established goals. How do I know if it's making an impact? Well, things that you do on social media are measurable. Conversations are measurable. And what I like to counsel clients to do is to take into account both qualitative and quantitative data. Because you can't just say, people saying my name X number of times means happy customers. Because there is a certain amount of sentiment analysis that needs to go with that. And what is weighted higher? 
somebody that mentions your name in a thousand tweets or somebody that writes one precious blog post about how amazing your company is. Which way is more? These are difficult decisions that are tr people are trying to make right now and ultimately it comes down to each company and what's more, what's more valuable to you and your brand. But ultimately you're going to have to make some of those decisions and determine your own metrics for measuring things. So you can get lots of data about what everything that's happening online is measurable, but what's valuable, that's something that only you and your company can determine. Terrific. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you once again for your insights on social media and marketing. And thanks to you viewers for joining us for our interviews, discussions, and conversations to let the outside world peek behind the M Group curtain to learn about the thinking within the agency. If you have any questions or comments, please send us a note at m at the M Group creative.com. And join us next time on Behind the Curtain for more insights on marketing and technology.